about sampling as an optimization in the space of measures, longevity dynamics as a composite op optimization. Okay, uh, uh, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Andre Wibisono, and today I will talk about sampling as optimization in the space of measures and on the launch of dynamics as a composite optimization problem. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, indeed, sampling can be viewed as optimization in the space of measures, right? Because if we want to sample from a target distribution, what we can do is to set up an objective function in the space of measures that's minimized at the target distribution, and then we can optimize this objective function. And we know how to optimize in rather general setting, right? For example, via gradient flow or accelerated methods and so on. So in principle, we can translate methods from optimization to sampling by applying them to this problem in the space of measures, right? And this is provided we can implement the resulting methods as possibly stochastic algorithms in space. A successful example of this story is the launch of dynamics for sampling in continuous time, although we will see that there are complications in discrete time that we should try to understand better before we move on to more complicated um, algorithms, such as momentum methods. Okay, so the launch of dynamics for sampling from a target measure nu, which is of the form e to the minus f, is the following stochastic differential equation, which looks like the noisy version of gradient flow perturbed by Gaussian noise. And it's actually not obvious from just staring at this equation that this works for uh, sampling from e to the minus f, but in fact, if you view this in the space of measures, this, this is actually performing the gradient flow dynamics of an objective function, which is relative entropy or KL divergence with respect to the target measure, right? And this is, this is really the reason why Langevin dynamics works for sampling. And relative entropy is nice because right, it is non-negative, it's minimized at the target measure. And moreover, the target measure is the only stationary point because the squared gradient is the Fisher information. And from the abstract theory, we know that gradient flow converges exponentially fast under a condition known as gradient domination. And this is satisfied, for example, when f is strongly convex. And moreover, this exponential rate um, also holds for basic discretizations, such as gradient descent and proximal gradient. For the relative entropy objective function, the gradient domination condition is what's called log Sobolev inequality, which is this bound between the Fisher information and relative entropy. Right? So in the ideal setting, the Langevin dynamics works for, um, for sampling and it has exponential rates when the target measure satisfies log Sobolev inequality. So for example, when the target measure is strongly log on cave. But what's nice is that log Sobolev inequality is stable under bounded perturbation, right? So, so that means even a multimodal distribution satisfies log Sobolev inequality, and therefore the Langevin dynamics converges exponentially fast there. And, <coughs> um, excuse me. and by analogy with the abstract theory, we also expect that the basic discretization, such as gradient descent and proximal gradient, to also converge exponentially fast under the, this log Sobolev inequality, right? That's what we expect. But in fact, a basic discretization known as the unadjusted Langevin algorithm is biased, right? So, so let's see why. So the unadjusted Langevin algorithm, or ULA, is the following algorithm. So it also looks like a noisy version of gradient descent. But this is in fact biased, which means it converges to the wrong, tar uh, to the, to the wrong distribution. And this bias exists even for a simple case such as Gaussian target measure. In this case, we can compute what the limit is explicitly, and we see that there is a bias of order one, right? And this bias is bad because it slows down the convergence rate from exponential to polynomial, right? And of course, there are ways to remove the bias, such as Metropolis Hastings, as we just heard. But let's try to focus on the simpler ULA structure and see where it goes wrong. Right. So, in particular, ULA cannot be the gradient descent discretization because it's biased. But then we can ask, what is the gradient descent discretization of Langevin dynamics? Right. And in fact, we can write down what is the gradient descent for minimizing relative entropy. It's this equation. But the problem is that um, only in very specific situations, for example, when the density rho k is known and it satisfies some log semi-concavity condition, then we can implement this using this update but we cannot iterate this because we don't know what the next density is. 
right? So except in one case, namely for Gaussian target measure with Gaussian data, we can actually implement this and see that it works um, and it converges exponentially fast as, is, as is expected. And the same story is true for the proximal gradient or the backward method that we cannot implement in general except for Gaussian setting. Right. So the problem here is really because of entropy, right? because if what we want to do is just to minimize a potential energy, which is this expected value, then it turns out that the basic algorithms such as gradient flow, gradient descent, and proximal gradient are all implemented by the, basic, the corresponding methods for the, the function in space. But for negative entropy, this is not true. The gradient flow or negative entropy is the heat flow and is exactly solvable by um, Brownian motion or Gaussian noise. But we cannot implement the forward or the backward method in general except for Gaussian um, setting, for Gaussian data. Right? And this is the opposite of what happens in optimization where we usually we, can, we cannot run gradient flow, so we run gradient descent or proximal gradient to approximate it. And here is the opposite, that we can run gradient flow, but we cannot run the forward or the backward method. Right? And this difficulty also carries over when we view relative entropy as a composite optimization problem. So now let's write en relative entropy as a sum of two terms, this potential energy and negative entropy. And let's recall that in general, a basic algorithm for composite optimization is the forward-backward method, which means we apply the forward method for one component and the backward method for the other. And this works, this is consistent because the backward method is the adjoint of the forward method. Right? So that's important to make the stationary point preserved. And moreover, this forward-backward method still converges exponentially fast under the gradient domination condition. But for relative entropy, we can implement the forward method by the gradient descent of f, but as we saw, we cannot implement the backward method in general, but again, except for one case, namely for Gaussian target measure with Gaussian data, we can actually run this and see that it converges exponentially fast. Um, okay, so for entropy, we cannot run the backward method, but we can do the, the exact flow. So if we just replace this backward method by this flow method, we actually get a ULA. So the unadjusted Langevin algorithm is doing this approximate discretization where we apply the forward method for F and then the exact flow or Gaussian noise for uh, entropy. And the substitution from the backward method to the flow method is a first order approximation. So ULA also has a first order bias. And when combined with the exponential contraction under strong log concavity, this implies this um, iteration complexity. Um, okay, so now, now that we've seen where the bias comes from, can, uh, let's see how we can reduce the bias. So here's, here's one um, simple idea. So recall that in general, given any algorithm, there is something that's called the adjoint, right? So for example, the adjoint of the forward method is the backward method, whereas the flow method is symmetric, it's self-adjoint. And symmetric methods are nice because they have even order, and that means they, their bias um, is at most of order two. Right? So, so, this, so this means that given any algorithm with first order bias, we can upgrade it to an algorithm with a second order bias by symmetrizing it. Right? So applying this idea to ULA, we get the following symmetrized form, which we can expand. So, and, and this is implemented by the following update. So it looks like we're applying the basic um, unadjusted Langevin algorithm with twice the noise, because we apply twice the flow operator. And then we hit it with this uh, backward operator, the proximal operator. And as like ULA, we can show that uh, the symmetrized form still has exponential contraction when the target measure is strongly locked on cave. And by construction, this should have a bias of order two, although right now it's still a, a conjecture because the synchronous coupling technique becomes rather messy. But if true, this would yield this faster complexity, um, iteration complexity. But what's nice is that um, the symmetrized form is actually unbiased for Gaussian target measure. And this you can check explicitly. And this is very special because it's using the fact that sum of independent Gaussians is Gaussian. And finally, let, uh, we also note that a bias of order two may be the best we can hope for because in general, any higher order bias would require running the heat flow backward in time, which means deconvolving Gaussians, which is hard to do in practice. And I think I'll stop there. Thank you so much for your attention. We have time to, for one, qu one question. I have a quick question. Um, 
So for this update, if you do implicit updates, do you think there will be any help in terms of uh, reducing the bias? Um, yeah, so this, this, this proximal operator is actually doing that implicit update, right? Because you can write this as the, uh, the arc mean of, you know, like some function value plus quadratic form. Let's thank the speaker one more time. You're done? Uh, how to use the later point? <laughs>